You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. Welcome. Little Tadpog Podcast. Right over here. This Wednesday. Homespun. For you, Wednesday. Homespun, artisanal, podcastery, here at here at Tadpog Farms. What would Tadpog Ev- Farms look like? <laughs> <laughs> Every butt meticulously curated. <laughs> shorn. Ever, shorn and penis lovingly crafted <laughs> To fit every taste, <laughs> big or small. I guess that is how you would market, you know, butts and penises if you were bringing them to Walmart, you know, pitching them. We well, got all sizes. You back up your truck, you have a little sign that says butts and penises, right. five cents, truck oh, full of them. God. If only it were that easy now, you know? <laughs> That's so quaint. You see, I remember looking at the old sepia tone photographs of the farmer with the wood plank pickup truck with yep. dicks and butts in the back of his. his back back bushels. when dicks and buck meant something. Yeah, really. I remember I'd go yeah. down and buy a butt for a nickel. <laughs> like Black Snake Moan, Samuel Jackson took his truck, sold, <laughs> sold some butts. Yeah, my my papa, my grandfather, my my mom's dad, he still does produce. He still like he still loves butts. He still fucking man, you can't tear that dude away. He actually <laughs> does like really like butts. So yeah, that is <laughs> I don't know that, but I do know that he fucks. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I assume that he likes butts. I assume butts. he likes butts. Yeah. But. <laughs> He might be missionary only. Get the get the butt away from me. He face it yeah, down. Yeah, I don't know. He might be. I don't know. <laughs> you know. What so, are you drinking? Well, I took I didn't furniture have any, polish. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it does look like that. I didn't have any big cups, so I took the container of Chi Chi's Long Island iced tea ah, okay. and filled it with a combination of uh, Sprite Zero, apple juice. Tequila and triple sec. Okay. All right. Yeah, but it totally looks like it looks like pledge. Yeah, you're drinking <laughs> pledge. Yeah. Or God forbid, Malort. It does look like Malort. It looks like it? Malort. Yeah. When you first like <laughs> when you pulled that bottle out, I was a little concerned that maybe we were going to <laughs> have Malort. That's not a die, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't drink that much Malort. I'm gonna drink a quart of Malort. <laughs> a quart. <laughs> but uh, I'm your bearded host, Tyler. And I'm very excited to see some package packages over there. Yeah, yeah, we got a package. Uh, this came in from uh, Kira and John, aka Bunny, and we've got. Um, I've been really anticipating this package because you know, not only do we grow our own mm-hmm. dicks and butts mm-hmm. on this farm, we yeah. also enjoy Organic. importing. Yeah, importing <laughs> spicy goods, uh, and this these are in fact uh, some spicy goods. Uh, this is the new hot sauce from Heat Nest. Man, who I know what this is, and man, man, I think we're gonna get lit the fuck up. I, I hope so. Um, Kira told me that uh, it's good on pizza, mm-hmm. so that's good. I need a new like pizza hot sauce, but yeah, it is. It is uh, hot ones. The last dab Apollo. Uh, made with the Apollo pepper. The god of the sun! Yeah. I mean, how do you top that? And medicine! <laughs> well, we'll, get a get re- we'll feel better. Uh, so they were really super cool and uh, sent two of these. So is, That's very awesome. That's so awesome. Because I was like, man, I want this. Now you got it. Hell Here, yeah. I'll, I'll pass it over, and you can we can each lick the flames from our own bottle of the sun. About to say and I will take this to work tomorrow. Casey will also want to enjoy this. Sweet. Uh and I they've also included um some chocolates to uh help ease the pain. Uh but I imagine also uh that there's no way we're going to eat all these chocolates. So these are probably also a good offering for Choco Chico. Ah, uh, yes. I recognize all of these except for 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I haven't had a Reese's Fast Break yet. Have you had one of these? A Reese's Fast Break? Not in a minute. It's milk, chocolate, peanut butter, and nougat. I pop the cap off this, and I'm I'm a foot away, and it's just like, oh god. Well, here, let me, I'm gonna throw you. Are you gonna Are you gonna partake in the candy? Or yeah. Are you? Oh, you fucking bet I am. Oh, well, I hit your microphone with that. Sorry. Would you like a Rolo as well? Do you like Rolo, the creamy caramels wrapped like, in rich chocolate candy? I do candy? like Rolos, but I do not think they will be of much help. This is what always works for me. It's just the plain quick, ass Hershey's quick, yeah. milk chocolate. Something fast acting. Rolo ain't fast acting. No, it's not. Like my grandma always used to say, <laughs> Rolo ain't fast acting. <laughs> we need some tough acting to act. <laughs> uh, there's also Kinder Bueno. Oh, I do like so those. So this those is this is a rare this is a rarity. Mm-hmm. Kinder Kinder crispy cream chocolate bar, crispy wafer with creamy <laughs> nut filling. <laughs> All right, I, man. So, so come. God, they just put it right on the package. Those dirty, <laughs> those dirty, dirty boys at Kinder. Every day we get further and further from God. <laughs> I uh, would you like a would you like a little tortilla chip? I would like a little tortilla chip. Take a little chip. Take a little chip. All right, I haven't smelled it yet. You said it smells. Real oh hot. yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it smells good though. Man, it's, that is. Mm. So okay, so now I guess this puts the Carolina Reaper in third place. I don't know behind Pepper X and now the Apollo Pepper. As much as I like spicy stuff, I don't really keep up. I really, honestly, don't keep up with the designer peppers. I think. Well, I think Carolina Reaper is technically still on top because Guinness hasn't certified the other two. Got to get that certification. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what. That's what all the college recruiters told me. Yeah, they're like, Tyler, if you want to get into the Guinness World of Records for the boy who ate the most balloons, you have to get it certified, (laughs) or it doesn't count. All right, number 10, according to pepperscale.com, the number 10 hottest pepper is the Seven Pot Barack Pour, which was invented by Barack Obama. (laughs) Uh, I want to create (laughs) the hottest pepper you've ever (laughs) <laughs> number nine is seven pot brain strain uh eight is the uh naga viper mm, mm-hmm. five is the dorset naga number four is the seven pot dougla du- dougla <laughs> dougla what's that site again this is uh bullshit pepper news.com okay uh, it's pepper scale pepper scale.com where they're listing, they, they actually list the 15 hottest. Number 15, Google just give me, you know, Google just give me a little short list. That's not so many. <laughs> I just, I'm a humble man. I just take what Google gives me. I don't need no more. I don't need no less. I just take what Google gives me. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. 15. The closest thing humanity has had in proximity <laughs> to a true God, Google. I take oh. what Google gives me. Oh, it's scary. Did you know there's a thing called an, an infinity pepper? No. Isn't that what Homer ate? I think that was the, uh, what was that? The, oh my God, I can't remember what it's <laughs> called now. That's horrible. Say it a little bit louder, Phil and Paul. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We can almost hear you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the insanity death pepper or something. like. It's like something insanity yeah. pepper, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'll look it up. That way we can make sure that our bases are covered. Mm-hmm. The Dorset Naga, number four is the Pot Dougla. Number three is the Trinidad Moraga Scorpion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Number two is the Komodo Dragon Pepper, which definitely sounds like something you would eat in like a Bonk's Adventure kind of game. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. man, you got the Komo- Komodo Dragon oh, Pepper. Oh, man, now you're going to breathe fire and hurt your enemies, but mm-hmm. you're also losing health yeah, while you yeah, do right, it. Right, exactly. It's the dark night of uh, fil- <laughs> of uh, chili peppers, and then number one they've got listed as the Carolina Reaper. Okay, uh, but I don't know. Honorable mention: Pepper X. Why honorable mention? Because it's not certified. Uh, maybe Pepper X is said to be double the heat. Yes, double of the Reaper, um, and a hefty seven hundred thousand Scoville heat units above even the Dragon's Breath. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's because it's not certified by Guinness yet. And I think that this was probably written 
Yeah, this was done like in 2019. So this was done, I guess, before you know the god Apollo uh, <laughs> shot Said, peppers at us from the sun, shit. right? Because <laughs> right. on this, the last dab Apollo, the last dab Apollo is the world's only hot sauce made with the Apollo pepper. made by Apollo Creed, made by Apollo Creed. <laughs> The first time you try it, it's going to knock you out. The second time, you'll barely win. The third time, <laughs> no one really knows what's going to happen. That's a good. I'm just going to smile and nod because, like, all I can do is make an Apollo Creed <laughs> name reference. <laughs> Outside of that, I don't know what the hell's going on. Still haven't seen a Rocky movie. That's it, a Rocky thing, good, right? Yeah. 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 The new hottest pepper from Guinness World Record holding. Oh, now it's saying it is certified by Guinness. That the who, Apollo is? God, who knows? With this back and forth Billy Mitchell bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> World record holding chili breeder smoking Ed Curry. Dude, Apollo, with a last name like Curry. <laughs> you, you better, you you better gotta, breed hot You got to bring it, man. <laughs> the Apollo pepper channels the sun's energy to bring new levels of flavor and heat to the world of super hot. Just wait until Pete Drunken Noodle has his pepper out. <laughs> 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 it's going to be even hotter than that. The Hades pepper. Perfect. That's, that'd be it's a good. Hot and cold at the same time. <laughs> it's also a video game tie-in. <laughs> the first ever video game tie-in <laughs> produce. Well, actually, I love it. I don't think that's true. I think Donkey Kong did that banana stuff. The Persephone so. pomegranate, so Ooh, good. <laughs> yeah, dude, I would. Yeah, that's like if there is not a pomegranate like company named Persephone, then like they yeah. are fucking missing out on a golden opportunity. Yeah. The, the Dyed Nicest Drink Wine Company. Come on. That one probably. Surely. That, that one Surely. Yeah, probably exists. All right. My nose is already running preemptively. Great. You want to do the thing? You want to eat the pepper sauce? <laughs> the hot sauce? Well, that's a lot. Okay. Ooh. ooh. I'm, I'm ready. I want it to hurt. I'm ready. You sound like me after my last relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single and ready to get hurt. Let's eat a chip. It smells good. It smells a lot like it smells a lot like the last one. It does. The chocolate one, like mm-hmm. what well, I can't remember what it was called, but it's really good. I'm still eating that on tacos. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, baby. That's how I rate hot sauce on like Austin mm-hmm. Powers quotes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd give that one uh, one. Yeah, baby. I'm feeling it in my uh, locked of vagina. What is that? Another- <laughs> <laughs> That's your rating. Oh, there it is. We just wash this down with a um, Hershey's milk chocolate rectangle. You went for the fast break, I see. Mm-hmm. How was that fast break? Good. It's a lot. It's more chewy than I expected. No crunch at all. It's like a firmer Milky Way. Mm-hmm. Do you like it three musketeers? Mm, no, not really. You don't. Mm. I like it three musketeers. I like that. It's just like, I don't know. It floats in that commercial from the 90s, so that's why <laughs> I like it. That is, that is exceptionally hot. I like it. Because where the chocolate is not hitting my mouth, I just feel like a ring of burning. Mm-hmm. It is hot. Oh, God. Not as bad as that... Uh, not, not as bad as that actual pepper that we ate. Oh, that was no. The, the Carolina no. Reaper. I don't feel like I'm running the risk of going to the emergency room. I'm not hiccuping or throwing up. Mm-hmm. So, this has been pretty good. Mm. Tadpog Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Chocolate and hot sauce. Uh, margarita mix. NyQuil. I do still have that. Um, Monster energy drink. Mm-hmm. Sp- sponsor of Tadpog Thanksgiving. 
All the things. These are all the things I'm thankful for. <laughs> I do have that Carolina Reaper injector for like, like a meat injector, and turkey. Yeah, that um, big dip pie baker Chris Vaughn got for us. Oh yeah. So I need to actually, for some Patreon, I will I will bake a oh man bake a chicken with it. I got my hopes up. I thought maybe you had one like in, here it is. Oh. <laughs> Kira, John, thank you. Oh my God, thank you. This yes. is so good. I'm a big fan. I can't wait to go home and order a pizza. Mm. This would be good on pizza. I want to make a curry with it. Mm, that'd be good too. An Ed curry. That was in my brain. I was mm-hmm. thinking a drink, but yeah. <laughs> An Ed curry homunculus that Tyler's <laughs> created in his kitchen. Oh, man. I do want to try this Kinder. Have you never had one? Uh, I've never had a Kinder Bueno, I don't believe. I've had Kinder chocolate before, but like, I guess it was just the illegal eggs or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Have you had one of these? I have, but I would oh, love another one. There you go. I Whoop. think they're very good. And I'm not throwing these very well. I need to practice throwing chocolate. You're throwing them just fine. I'm not catching very well. <laughs> I don't know. This Bruce Wayne-esque dining table is hard to gauge Like <laughs> how far I should throw. Oh, these look like pretzel bites or something. Oh, yeah, it's, good. it's a very soft crunch. Mm-hmm. So are we breaking the law by eating these? or I don't... Probably. Yeah. We're renegades. Uh huh. We'll get some raw milk with yeah. it. It's going to be great. <laughs> raw milk and that one cheese made by maggots. Oh, that's illegal? Mm hmm. I remember I watched a documentary over like illegal food clubs that will like have big dining events where they each will make one of the illegal things. They all get together in, in private and secret and eat them. That kind of sounds like up your alley a little bit. It does. It absolutely I does. mean,. <laughs> I would eat the mac and cheese. I'm not a cop. You can tell me if you are actually in one of these clubs. I won't turn you in. No, I'll. Well, we can start one. I'm down. Oh no, I don't want to be involved. That sounds gross. <laughs> but I mean, I want you I'm to be eat the mac and cheese. <laughs> I want you to be happy. I'll pick the maggots yeah. out. I'll just be happy for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, I will just eat the things that I am comfortable with. <laughs> Which is like you're a pretty adventurous eater, though. For this area, sure. <laughs> but I mean, you go to like a coast or something, and it's like, yeah, I'm not an adventurous eater. I don't think <laughs> like a lot of it. I'm like hamstrung by just not liking fish. I just don't like fish or, mm. or that fishy flavor. Yeah. So it's like a lot of stuff is just like just cut right out, and it's yeah. Although speaking of food like that, though, yeah, because um, I still don't have Netflix. I still pretty much all I watch is YouTube. Between everything, when I do get to sit down and watch TV. So my what I've been watching lately is uh, Freaky Eaters. Freaky Eaters? Freaky Eaters. Have you friended any of the Freaky Eaters on Facebook yet? <laughs> I have not yet. <laughs> okay, all right. Why not? <laughs> Melissa did mention it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, Great. Because we were watching. It's about people. They didn't really have eating. They didn't, I mean, I wouldn't call it an eating disorder, but um, it's not like bulimia and anorexia or anything. They, they exclusively only... eat Maggot cheese. <laughs> well, it's I exclusively eat like one food. Okay, like couch stuffing. One food. Uh, that is what it's. That my strange addiction had right, the couch stuffing. Right, I remember that one. That's an old one too. That's like back when we had cable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the weirdest, the weirdest one I saw was the lady who like ate tons and tons of cornstarch. Just cornstarch? Just like sh- she would eat other things, but then like in between. Was she, like, she afraid of pooping? Like, was that like. <laughs> that's that's what they asked. Like, you're going to get a bowel obstruction if I, you keep yeah, eating all this cornstarch. I mean, I would think so. They show them like, he poured a bunch of cornstarch into a pool of water. I don't water. care. I like to go six weeks before I poo. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be time for activities. <laughs> It saves me at least 40 minutes a day. I'm about to say, I would have an extra hour a day if I just didn't, didn't have to poop. I wasn't kidding with the 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just because I like to take a, I like a leisurely, I'm like Al Bundy. I just like to go in there and be like, well, 
I don't get smoke breaks at work, but I'm going to sit here and poo for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell Melissa, she's like, why do you poop so long? I, I got to let it heal back up. Yeah. It's got to, if I do it too fast to get up, it just feels like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not ready. Like, I just imagine like your, your rectum Wolverine style, just like healing <laughs> over. Snitting back over. <laughs> right. If I don't poop. Once every two hours, my h- butthole is just it's gone. Close. It's just like it's, <laughs> it's like an ear piercing. It just grows over. It's not good for anybody. Like, Did I have to go there and puncture it again? I'm in there with an ice pick. It's not good for anybody. Honey, make my new asshole. You can see where you can see where the skin's thin, where it's grown over. Just yeah. just punch right through that. Oh God! Just lance it, <laughs> Doctor Pimple Popper. I think the first one, the cornstarch lady, they showed like where they could walk the across cornstarch corn and <laughs> they could walk across the cornstarch in water, you know, because if you run oh, fast, yeah. it's how, you know, the, how the thickening power of sure. it. Sure. And she was like, oh, well, I didn't know that. She didn't know that. She, she didn't, didn't know feel how it. powerful it was. Like in her mouth? You know what I mean? Because I've never had just straight up cornstarch. I, I, I can't imagine. I've never just eaten another. It does feel wonderful in your hands. It's like really? powdered silk. Silk, powdered silk. It it is like it's silk putting seals. your hand in cornstarch is extremely gratifying. But it, but I couldn't imagine eating. Yeah, it. yeah. I don't know. I guess my problem with corn. I don't like cornstarch. Like obviously, I like it in things that it's in. But like anytime Nikki cooks with it, I hate it because it's just like I feel like I find it in places. You got to be really you know? careful with yeah. it. You have to like you can't just pour it in there the what's it's going to clump. You have to like break it down with your fingers in water and then pour the water into something so you yeah. then thicken it. So so she would hide bags like it was cocaine all over her house and all in her car in weird places. Was she pretending? <laughs> At the end of the episode is she like fucking scarface like with a big mound of cornstarch <laughs> on her desk. <laughs> 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 well cuz and of course it's still a reality show like so a lot of it is fucking fake. I believe sure. that these are people with issues but they make the sure. big fake pomp and circumstance around yeah, it. Yeah, when they show up they're like, "Okay, just be a big personality." <laughs> <laughs> well they they, ca- they catch her eating the the cornstarch that she's hidden in her car. So these two people just walk up to her. There just happens to be a camera just standing right there. Right. They walk up and surprise her while she's digging through a plastic bag with a spoon, eating her cornstarch, and she has it like all over her face like it's fucking coke. Like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Tyrone Biggums. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. She, has, she has it all over her face. <laughs> she's like, no, I have to hide it from my husband because it's like me eating three boxes of cornstarch a day. <laughs> Well, I feel like that's a pretty valid concern. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure uh-huh. you're right that that was totally staged. <laughs> that, that's but. the weirdest one. The other one was like the guy who um, who was addicted to maple syrup. Oh, he put man. maple syrup on. I don't like everything. I don't want to be in either of these people's <laughs> houses. How do they live? That Tell one me really that. grossed out Melissa was the maple <laughs> syrup because he's like oh. putting it on his eggs. He's putting it on everything he eats is yeah. covered in maple syrup, or which is really not maple syrup. It's cheap ass. Corn syrup, you know, from gotcha. Walmart. Yeah, put like, some brown flavoring or brown yeah, coloring. For brown in there. coloring, we'll call that flavoring. corn syrup. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, because like his uh, his grandmother who used to love would always make him waffles, so he has a attachment to the maple syrup. That's why he constantly eats it. I mean, that's what makes waffles better than pancakes. <laughs> You've got the syrup traps, you know, and the butter traps. I don't like syrup a whole lot, but butter. I, I don't. I'm down. I'm not. I would. I can. I do like syrup on waffles and pancakes. Uh, I used to dip popcorn in it when I was little. That's how yeah. I eat popcorn. But I do prefer a waffle over a pancake. Crispy. Waffle's crispy. I mean, when uh, it's good. Like, a good waffle is way better than a good pancake, yeah. I think. And Mitch Hedberg called it, like, while you're starting to eat a pancake, it's great, but by the time you get to the end, you're fucking <laughs> sick of them. Right. Like, that's 100% how I feel about pancakes. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how many are stacked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You I stack get... up Kroger pizzas like their pancakes. <laughs> right. <That's> the... <laughs> I mean, I get that. And a gallon of lemon-lime Gatorade. <laughs> that's culinary school. <laughs> I get that, like, that's the appeal of a pancake, right? Is that you can just stack them. The spectacle, yeah. Yeah, they're like Legos. They're like yeah. the Legos of, or really, they're the Lincoln Logs of <laughs> breakfast foods, <laughs> if you think about it. Because what, um, that one, and they showed him, like, how much he would eat maple syrup in a day, and it was, like, it was ridiculous how much he would eat. Do they get into 
I mean, I know you said with the lady, they were like, look, this is like going to stop you up forever, mm-hmm. like a fucking mummy in a tomb. Yeah. But like, do they like go through like with everybody? Or they're like, this is what your bowels look like right now. Not, and not- then it's like Goofy driving a car <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> 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 I do like your goofy impression. Thank you. I've, I worked on it all day. I hope you can, <laughs> I hope you can tell. Uh, they will give them all blood tests and show them what their dye suit or their body. Uh, so their like doctors, him, like, are their doctors ever like, stop? Everyone, he's telling me, like, yeah, everybody wants me to stop, but I'm not. A fucking, I love it. I love maple syrup. I'll never stop. So they're having him, like, try different things to see if he'll eat yeah. anything that's slightly healthier. Um, he hates everything but like peach salsa. So really, in the end, what it doesn't salsa? do any peach, peach, peach salsa, peach salsa. I Toward see. the end, like, it doesn't really do him any good because he just substitutes peach salsa for maple syrup <laughs> that he puts on everything. Well, I mean, my diet's pretty bad, but this makes me feel great. Yeah. So yeah, thanks reality TV <laughs> for delivering exactly what we want. <laughs> yeah. There's the guy who only ate pizza. Since he was like four years <laughs> Since old. Since he was a small oh. turtle. <laughs> Please tell me he came out of the house like, oh my God! That's like a turtle. Yeah. They're my favorite. I have to eat. And they're like, holy it's shit. The turtles diet. <laughs> he flips it on them. <laughs> like, what have we gotten ourselves into? And he's like, he's got a camera. <laughs> what are you drinking there? Starbucks. Mmm. <laughs> And the deal with that guy is like, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he's eaten so much pizza for so long, he craves it, but he's developed like an uh, a dairy allergy almost. So it's because of the cheese, right? So it is. It's that's what's really because he used to be a he was like a star athlete in high school and into college. Classic. That tale is old as time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, he was a volleyball star. And then uh, he basically this this pizza started kicking his ass. He refused. To, he refused to stop eating pizza and had to quit volleyball. Michelangelo, are you on the junk again? <laughs> it should be, he he eats something like four hundred pizzas a year or something like they stack I them mean, all up and show them two pizzas everything. a day. <laughs> I mean, if, if there's three meals a day. I mean, I feel like a third of the time you're not eating pizza. <laughs> Almost a third of the time. Uh, he basically just he kicked. Dairy, and then he was like, suddenly he was okay. Wait, I want to confirm. Are you not supposed to eat that much pizza? Because <laughs> I need to make some calls. Because I think I need to switch doctors, because no one has told me to stop. Uh, there was a guy who only ate cheeseburgers since he was a yeah. little kid. Uh, and like- he was married to a, a, a... His wife was in culinary school, so she'd make all these big meals, and he wouldn't eat them he would when he knew she was cooking he would go eat a bunch of cheeseburgers before he got home and then <laughs> sorry I'm cheeseburgers. Full. yeah I, I you know i stopped ate some on the way home <laughs> but it was like pretty much just plain cheeseburgers i bet they have real ate. good sex though because <laughs> <laughs> he was that was probably the biggest couple disparity between the two of them like, i you bet can that tell was a... he only eats cheeseburgers <laughs> you can tell he only eats cheeseburgers like, if i were to look at that dude yeah. and somebody told me he only, he only eats cheeseburgers yeah that lines up <laughs> yeah <laughs> i kind of i kind of thought that already <laughs> i'm like so the the therapy for him was i mean showing how much all like the burger containers how much he ate in a year yeah. and then try, mean, basically then like all right we're going we want to expand your palate but we want to play it safe in baby steps. So it's basically like, all right, here's a burger. There's some lettuce on this burger. Can you eat this? Oh, we would just eat them plain or what? Yeah, just plain. That's all he would ever eat. He was like, he'd, and I, like I no him, pickles or nothing no, on there? nothing. Mustard, ketchup? Nope. Really? And I showed Meat Ma- bun. Uh, meat, meat cheese bun done. Meat cheese bun done. Okay. And I showed Melissa because Melissa will either do a plain cheeseburger or a ketchup and pickle. No, that's if, like, if uh, there is any piece of lettuce that yeah. has been on it, I could, I'll take it off. She's like, I can still taste that. it. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. So the guy's talking about how, like, it is a personal affront to me if I find tomatoes or pickles or, God forbid, lettuce on my cheeseburger. What did you do, pause? So I stopped looking, Melissa, come here! <laughs> come here! <laughs> and she watched it. She's like, I get it. It is a personal assault. <laughs> yeah. Well, it reminds me of Jacob of Wolf Fighting fame. He always gets a uh, plain... Meat cheese bun plain done. Plain cheeseburger, yeah. He's come a long way since we used to live together when it comes to, yeah. like, eating, like... I'm impressed with him because it was like, dude, how do you survive? Come on, man. <laughs> I like a cheeseburger. He, he has really, really come around. I like a cheeseburger. I like. It's kind of funny because it's like, if you really like look at all four of those 
episodes that you watched, there is a pretty big like. Oh, I've watched more than four. <laughs> please go, <laughs> please come on. <laughs> but there's a pretty big like difference between like I only eat cornstarch to like I eat real food, just like. Like a lot of that. <laughs> like, I mean, I just eat cheeseburger, like dangerous amounts of cheeseburgers, but I'm not, it's actual food. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's not like an ingredient. To wean the cornstarch girl off of cornstarch, oh, no. like you need to her Ajax. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to let murder you. Man, this can't be helped. I'm sorry. Uh, because they, um, they tested her blood and it's like, you have like no minerals or vitamins in your blood. So they're like, how are up. you alive? How are you alive? <laughs> So they start mixing in like um like flour and shit. Well, like uh protein powders and stuff gotcha. like that. And, and then with a decent amount of corn cuz they tried just that and she's like no it doesn't feel the same. So they had to do a a decent mix of cornstarch in it. So now she's trying to do that less and less, but at least she's getting some nutrition and not just cornstarch. Do they talk about like why like, like, why the disorders like exist? A lot of them have. It's tied to something in their childhood or something, I know you, some kind of trauma. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about the dude's grandmother with the waffles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the woman who only she ate other things, but she would eat forty ice cream bars a day. Man, that's a lot of ice cream yeah, bars. Yeah, because it showed how many she would go through, and that's she like, started, It was only this one kind, this one brand. Do you remember the brand? Uh, it was like Roland Farms or dude, something like that. I bet, I bet Mr. Roland was watching that episode. Like, <laughs> fucking stop, dude! Fucking stop! <laughs> fucking stop! That was in the comments a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and the tale is that once this episode aired, Roland Farms went out of business. <laughs> I got three kids, man. I got to get through. No one's heard of us before. This is our only customer. <laughs> and she, um, both her sons like moved out and she had a horrible divorce and she had to relocate to a new city because of work. So she had no one and she just substituted. She even said like, when I eat these ice cream bars, I feel happy. They're my best yeah. friends. I'm not lonely anymore. Yeah. So like basically they sort of just got her involved in the community and- she didn't. She didn't need it anymore. She she dropped it. And then there was that one time that a car fell on her, and a giant ice cream sandwich <laughs> lifted it up. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that too. I'm trying to think what the the woman who um she only she was on an all liquid diet. She choked really badly, and since then she couldn't physically couldn't bring herself to swallow anything. So it, it's the like grossest episode. Stuff? She would have dinner with her family, chew the food up to get the juices out, and spit it in a cup, and like would zoom in on yeah. her just like regurgitating this food. And she did it for like a year and a half and lost 150 pounds. And like she like stuff was shutting down. She was in such bad shape. One of her kids was like, I'm gonna be like mommy and refused to eat and was doing the same thing. So they had like spit cubs full of chewed up food at the dinner table. It reminds me of that Rocco's Modern Life episode where Rocco goes to Heifer's family. <laughs> <laughs> Give Grandpappy Wolf his food. Right. Top, top. I'll never forget that gumming, that wet gumming of the food in Rocco. Yeah, the green bubbles. But all in all, all, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good little show. What's the, it called the, again? One freaky, more time. Freaky Eaters. Freaky. It also seems like a real judgy name. <laughs> yeah, a little it? bit. A little bit. We're really trying to help these people. What's the name of the show again? A freaky, freaky Eaters. Freaky Eaters. Fucked up idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up idiots and their more fucked up stomachs. Look at look at these food clowns. <laughs> <laughs> the woman who could only eat French fries. Um, that was that's that episode I saw a long time ago. She that's seems where... like a perfect match with the dude who can only eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah. Why? Like, <laughs> we'll just go on dates and be there happy right? forever. Let's take the show to the next level, the spinoff, <laughs> where they just date each other. Just couple up, freaky, <laughs> freaky, freaky wife swap. <laughs> Like, cause that's the one I saw that I found out about tasters and non-tasters and then people who are neither. Because mm. they do that test Neither a, a taster or, or non-taster? Yeah, the, What's the, the girl who only ate, could only stomach French fries, yeah. she was not, like, less than 1% is neither one. Interesting. But what does that mean? Like, they just don't, like... Just their palate's so Schrodinger's narrow. taste buds? Yeah, it's I just see. like certain things just, I guess instead of just... Tasting things strongly, some things just taste, just have a negative taste. Gotcha. Very few things will not hit that sensor. I just want to say that, like, I'm really proud that I haven't smoked in a long time. I'm very proud you haven't smoked in a long time. 
but however, this is what happens when you ban smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people got to destroy themselves one way or another. You know what I mean? Like probably the the worst episode that kind of had because they all reached some sort of resolution toward the end, except yeah. the girl who's addicted to cola. She drinks thirty to forty cokes a day. I'm sorry, was this our president? <laughs> <laughs> he just died. Oh, right, right, These right. are straight up leaded cokes. Yeah, look, I can't, I can't fucking like. <laughs> How many does she drink? Uh, like 30 to 40. At least a, a whole case a day. That's a little bit more than I drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't help that her diet was also just junk food. So she'd pour a bunch of Coke and then dip Twinkies and Ho-Hos and shit in the Coke and eat them. I've never done that. <laughs> For the record. Let the record show that I've never done that. She was the only one who'd just be like... Do you realize how bad this is for your body? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never... Are you going to stop? I don't want... No, I don't want to. Ma'am, are you aware this is illegal in 48 states? And this is a food crime that you're committing it's a right food now? food crime. <laughs> food cops. <laughs> food cops arresting the freakiest eaters. Cola Girl was on uh, Dr. Phil Cola at one point. Girl. <laughs> she was uh, a Russian immigrant, Dude. and as a kid, when she came over, her first food, her first meal was... Fast food, and she yeah. never had Coke before. Yeah, from that and point on, she's like, "This is happiness." Yeah, this is, of course, because like it's like yeah, flavor just. We burst came over from the gulag life. where we had yeah dirty water and gruel. Now, yeah, and that was at their McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> our McDonald's are way different. <laughs> I'll, I'll have the McGruel. <laughs> what did I listen to? Uh, maybe it was a Radio Lab, or maybe it was a Cracked about McDonald's in Russia. I haven't heard this one. So they had to, in ever what is what is it, like a Russian proverb? Zeus, back me up on this or tell me I'm wrong. But like, um, only fools and Americans smile or smile for no reason or something like that because people in Russia don't generally like smile at each other. It's not it's like Americans do. Like every time you see somebody, oh, smile, wave, say hi. Like that's not a thing over there. So in McDonald's, when the iron, you know, the wall comes down. McDonald's comes into Russia, so they're training people to smile at customers and teach them the good customer service. And the guy who's Russian who's moved to America, he just he was very weird and unsettling and hard to get people to train people to do this. But whenever I would feel sad, I would just go to McDonald's and have the people smile at me and eat their food. <laughs> well, you know they had that – I don't know if they still have this saying or not, but they're like, the smiles are free. Do you remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I remember Brandon going up and ordering a smile, thinking he was real fucking clever, <laughs> and like the person behind the the counter just like, I have heard this a dozen times. Today. Well, it's like anytime I go to Chick Fil A, I um and I say thank you. I do feel like saying you don't have to say my pleasure. <laughs> like I'm just every time you say it, I can tell you don't mean it. You might as well just not say it. Just when I say thank you. Just silence is fine. <laughs> right before you got here, I did watch a TikTok of someone like driving off and then a Chick fil A employee run sprinting like the fucking T one thousand beside their car, <laughs> getting to pull over. Bam, you pulled off where I could say, My pleasure. So giving you that chicken sandwich is my pleasure. <laughs> and then going back. Uh I have not been watching that show. I haven't really been watching a whole lot of anything. I've been playing a lot of stuff. I'm yeah. Dave, your respectable host. Um, I've been playing Super Metroid. I'm going to finish that game. It's my third attempt over the last, since we've started this podcast, mm -hmm. to play Super Metroid. Um, I still don't enjoy it, but I am going to finish it. I want I want a remake with tight controls, like they can like like Zero Mission and Fusion. See, I haven't played. I the only Metroid games I have played have been Metroid and Super Metroid, and like that's it. And I haven't played any others because I didn't like either Metroid or Super Metroid. So yeah. it's like, why would I continue to you, do you these? Would like, yeah. You would like those, especially Metroid Fusion, because it yeah. has a strong sort of horror element to it. And I know that Super Metroid like does too. Like it's, you know, atmospheric. It lends itself to being a like an ace totally. really a really dig into that niche, really strongly survival horror. Yeah. Metroid would be Yeah. Great. It's like Nintendo's alien franchise yeah. essentially. Uh, but I am going to finish it. This time I'm fucking I've made it past the point that I got last year when you and I were both mm -hmm. playing it. And uh, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. I've got two bosses left. 
Oh, two right. bosses All left. Right. Uh, that's the game of the month on the SNES Club mm-hmm. on the Discord, bit.ly slash Tadbog Discord. Uh, I've been playing uh, Final Fight LNS Ultimate, the fan what? game that I talked about on last episode. Uh, okay. Uh, it's pretty rad. <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah. It's free. Uh, I wish it had online support. Like, that would be cool. Like, up to four players can play at the same time, but it all has to be local, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, Grim and I tried to get it going on Parsec, but uh, failed spectacularly. Uh, but other than that, I, I really recommend it. Uh, I have big news um, regarding the Tadbox Secret Santa. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if everyone's seen it or not, uh, but if you haven't, Kind of Phil. Go to Tadbog Nation Facebook group or go to the Tadbog Discord and watch Phil's video that he made. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not Phil. It's uh, Sandwich Claus. Watch the video that Sandwich Claus made. (laughs) Uh, With all the details for the Secret Santa, uh, I am going to go ahead and give you those details Mm -hmm. since if you're listening to this, you know, we might as well do that. But definitely watch Phil's video, or uh, Sandwich Claus's video. Uh, Registration is open for Tadbog Secret Santa. Uh, at bit.ly slash Tadpog Santa. Uh, the deadline to sign up is December 6th. So um, you don't have a whole lot of time. So hopefully you're listening to this before December 6th. If you're not, we'll catch you next year. Mm-hmm. Yep. Where we'll hopefully we'll give you more notice. I almost bought uh, War of the Gems this weekend, the Marvel game. Oh, yeah. For the SNES. Oh, technically, I, I really attempted really hard to buy the game. Um, I was at our local shop. That's where I also almost bought it for you. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's where I, I got Super Punch Out. Yeah, well, um, I mean, really, honestly, like between the two of them, Super Punch Out. I mean, I like I like War of the Gems a lot, mm-hmm. but like Super Punch Out is the one that I think is the better one to have in a collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went th- I went there right, and they've got a rack of Super Nintendo games, and I've got my uh, Game Eye app open, so I'm looking through my collection, and you know. Checking prices to see what's overpriced and, and what is underpriced. They were surprisingly reasonable. When Very I was there. reasonable, especially when you consider shipping. So yep. it's like anything anything there on that rack that had a clean label that um, was priced below price charting, I just bought. It wasn't much. Mm-hmm. It was like six games yep. that they had that fit the, that criteria. But that's kind of like the fun of it. Set mm-hmm. the criteria, go in, see what you can get. Yeah. They had um, they had like dirt- dating. Yeah, exactly. I you know I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, dirt- <laughs> the criteria hole. <laughs> Go and see what you can get. N- number of <laughs> any. <laughs> uh, they they did have Dirt Tracks FX, which is the game that we're going to talk about today. But like every other copy of Dirt Tracks FX that I have found online, it was just completely trashed. <laughs> like the label just like ripped. Yeah. Uh, and it, I don't know. It really just speaks to the the kind of kid that owned Dirt Tracks <laughs> FX, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a rough and tumble kind of It was kid. a Shane. It's a, a Shane, Shane game. Yep. Um, not Bubba Shane, some other Not Shane. Not Bubba Shane, some other Shane. Uh, but they had War of the Gems. <laughs> the only good Shane. <laughs> That's not true. I know another good Prove Shane. Prove me wrong! <laughs> Introduce me to your Shane! Well, now I don't want to, because I feel like you're going to judge him <laughs> too harshly. He is kind of a jerk, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah. He does exclusively just eat hot dogs. So you're going to judge him over that? or <laughs> no, no bun, just oh, hot yeah. dogs. We can have a problem? Just a fistful of naked dogs. <laughs> Every meal is a competition to him. <laughs> <laughs> he carries around a, a bottle of water, just dipping hot dogs, just cramming them in his mouth. He's, he's got one of those belts that arcade guy owners have, <laughs> uh, to dispense quarters. It's just hot dogs in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they had War of the Gems in the case at the store, right? And they also had they had two games in the under glass, right? That mm-hmm. were like they meet my criteria. Cool spot and um, War of the Gems. War of the Gems barely met the criteria, mm-hmm. and it was the most expensive out of all those games. Yeah. So I was kind of like, well, all right, I have some, I, I have cash in my wallet. That's my that's my budget. I got my fun money. Got my cash in my wallet. I got enough for all of this. So I tell him, yeah, can you, cool spot and War of the Gems. I like those as well, please. So guy tells the other guy, take him out. He does, brings him to the counter. They ring him up, and then I get the total. And the total is about $40 less than I expected it to be. 
And I'm thinking. I promptly said nothing to the <laughs> cashier. Of course I did not. Because I was like, am I willing to never come here again? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, but instead of like really thinking about it. and being, I'm still supporting small business in a pandemic. <laughs> I mean, what would you do? Oh, what, what I just yeah. said. I would absolutely just be like. Nothing seems to miss here. Here you go. <laughs> I mean, what I here's here's how fine I, game vendor. <laughs> here is my money for an appropriate purchase. I bid you adieu. Run, 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 run. I, you sure ran out of here really quickly. <laughs> I look, man. I remember where they're in my car like I'm in Jurassic Park. <laughs> just trying to get it. I remember when their NES games were four times the going rate of Nintendo they games. They were, yeah. This is just this is just you know. It's all balancing their, out. Their Texan copy of Sparkster was like $120. <laughs> so instead of logically being like, oh, they didn't ring one of the games up, I was like, okay, the pricing, they haven't updated their pricing in their system uh-huh. to like what the labels are. So I'm like, okay, give them the cash, get in the car, drive home, take the games out to clean them. And I'm like, oh, well, the War of the Gems is here. That's why it was so cheap. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, and I live three minutes away from that store, like very, very close. Um, and I'm like, all right, fine. I, I'm going to go back and I'm going to explain the situation and be like, I don't think you guys, I don't think, I don't, I didn't buy War of the Gems. Like I thought yeah. about War of the Gems. So I get back, I walk in, a guy, as I walk in, a guy passes me and walks out and they see the, the two guys in the store see me and they kind of look at each other. And I'm like, uh oh. They just fucking sold that they copy. They just one. sold it to that guy. And I could not believe it. Cause I was like, I was like, are you That was serious? there when I was there for your, like, on your birthday. <laughs> That's how long it is sat there. Well, I, cause I was like, I, I could, I honestly couldn't believe it. And I wasn't mad or anything. I was just like, I was just more flabbergasted. And I was like, are you serious? That guy bought it? Karma that fast? <laughs> Wow. That fast? Wow, that's a John Lennon or something. <laughs> so it was like, I was like, well, they, they told me, they're like, that guy, he heard you talking up War of the Gems and bought it. And uh, to which I was like, where's my commission? Because I feel like I'm owed at least $4. Um, but there was like, he, they apparently that guy, if he hears somebody talk Say something is cool in the store, he will buy it. <laughs> and at first, I was like, "This is bullshit." Like, what happened was, it, like, if the game were, if the game weren't priced exactly where it should have been priced, mm-hmm. I would have been like, "Bullshit!" You you rang it up and you were yeah. like, "Oh fuck, we're losing our ass on this." Yeah. But it wasn't. I mean, it was not. It was a, it was not a deal. It was just a fair price on the game. Yeah. And then yeah, sure enough, that guy that guy bought it. And what's even funnier is like when I pulled up into the into the parking spot, I saw that guy looking through the same rack that I was looking at, yep. and I was even like, I got all the good shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already got it all. I already got it all. Well, let's, I'm gonna have to go in next time. And be like, holy fuck, dirt track FX. <laughs> it even looks like it was on a dirt track. This just, is great. Just pick, just pick the most expensive thing. <laughs> Let's bankrupt this guy. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this. Number one, TMN, TMNT. <laughs> wow, twelve thousand. Only twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> what do you have a bus of Captain America up there for two hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> yeah. Man, that is awesome. God, I wish I had twelve of those. I let my wife <laughs> suck anyone's dick that had that in their house. <laughs> <laughs> She'd look at it the whole time, just <laughs> sucking that dick. You just you just added another layer completely to Tadpog Farms. <laughs> <laughs> just busts a field of busts <laughs> growing out of the dirt. So yeah, that's right. This is a eight hundred dollars resin bus of Itachi Sasano, <laughs> homegrown. <laughs> Look, man. That's an that's an orga- organic Mongekyo <laughs> Sharingan right there. Antiques Roadshow in 100 years is going to be super fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what we have here is Goku going Super Saiyan <laughs> Blue. Historians say <laughs> it's going Super Saiyan with the Harding with the power of a Super Saiyan God. Can you imagine a world where? Someone doesn't know what a Funko Pop is. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the only surviving Joker from Batman Begins. <laughs> You've got quite a find on your hands. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It saved me forty dollars. Is kind of how I looked at it. Okay, that's fair. And it's like now the hunt, the hunt is still on for yeah. that game. I might be able to. Surely, I'll be able to find a better deal than that. And hopefully you do, and next time you see that guy, just, just, just rub it in his face. Punch him in his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> in his doughy, exclusively cheeseburger-eating face. <laughs> well, do you hear that, Dave? I do hear that. Uh, 50 minutes into the podcast. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like a whole bunch of not game talk, which we'll probably hear about, uh-huh. but that's okay. That's, that's okay. That's okay. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get worse. Are you ready? You're right. <laughs> uh, of course, I hear that sound of Tyler's crushing spirit, uh, which, which ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia mm. and not administering the 25 most common dirt bike terms quiz that I had <laughs> half acidly prepared. That was just going to be like, we can cut, we can TLDR that. That was going to demonstrate how little we know about um, dirt bike racing. Oh fuck yeah, which is very little. I know, I know very, very, very little. little. Um, other than the fact that Travis Pastrana, I'm done. Was that a Sopranos character? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was he a dirt bike guy? He's called Little Dirt Bike. Little Dirt Bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know him. I went to school with Little Dirt Bike. He wrote. He killed me with a little dirt bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'd make a bite the curb and then run over with a little dirt bike. Like he'd line up seven people yeah. and yeah, <laughs> jump them. <laughs> Those are called moguls. <laughs> if you ask me, dirt, dirt bike racing needs more moguls. That's my final fucking statement on that. Uh, yes, of course I hear that, which ushers in a segment called Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys, Dirt Tracks FX is a racing video game developed by Sculptured Software and released by Acclaim Entertainment for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1995. The 3D graphics of the game were made possible by the Super FX-powered GSU-1, which is built into the cartridge. I don't know why every time I read from Wikipedia, my body is like, dude, you gotta get all your burps out, man. (laughs) You know how you talk for the last 50 minutes and haven't had any Nothing, issue with yeah, gas? Yeah. Now you need to do, get rid of that stuff. Until you give $10 through the Wikipedia uh, fun drive, you're going to burp every time you read it's it. It's the Wikipedia the curse. The curse. <laughs> Burper. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Are you you remember Sculptured Software, right? From uh, Vaguely. Mortal Kombat ports, essentially, is okay. their big thing. Okay. Yeah. Um. They they mainly did the ports for the Super Nintendo, which, you know, mixed reviews on that first one, but uh, Mortal yeah. Kombat 2. Uh-huh. Very good. Very, very good. good. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, according to IGN, <laughs> is also a very good one. <laughs> according to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not so much. According to Jim. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> according to Jim. Kind of rapey. <laughs> according to Jim. His according to Jim, <laughs> according to David Cross. Kind of rapey. <laughs> According to Dave, watching according to Jim, Jim's step sister. <laughs> the wrong brother died. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know that's not just me. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Dirt tracks FX. Um, I think that based on our short conversation, our brief conversation mm-hmm. before we started recording, I think we're going to have very different opinions on the game mm-hmm. because uh, I walked in and you were playing Dirt Tracks FX, and then. I set up to record, and then you came in, and you said, well, well that was a game. And I was like, <laughs> yep. okay. And, and I expected that, because I, yep. I know you don't tip, you don't like racing games no, to begin not really. with. And this game is um, very different. This is a very different game. It is. It is. Uh, because it is not a Mode 7 racer like Mario Kart or any of the Mario Kart clones that we've talked about. Uh, it is a... 3D Star Fox esque. Imagine Star Fox or, but in, or Stunt Race FX. Okay, and I do want to get mm. to that for sure. Yep. Because I replayed, I replayed a little bit of Stunt Race FX. Oh. Because I was like, <laughs> is Stunt Race FX better than I remember? Can we get lower than twelve frames? <laughs> can, we, can we do that? Stunt Race FX is trash. <laughs> yeah. Stunt Race FX is a trash game. This 
This is better than Stunt Race FX. And I, that's on my I'm list of you. topics. I'm with you. Uh, I think that this game, uh, Dirt Tracks FX, is the frame rate is better than Stunt Race uh-huh. FX. Almost everything in Dirt Tracks FX is 3D, with the exception of, and I know this sounds super silly, but like the racers are sprite based. And it's like, okay. And then the guy with the flag at the finish line is sprite based. But it, like from what I can tell, mm-hmm. everything else is is 3D. Yeah. And that's, I mean, granted, it's low res, you know, it's low res 3D, mm-hmm. but it's still. It's like Star Fox quality as far as like the 3D goes, yeah. as, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, no, this game is certainly not my favorite. I I I got about 15 minutes into Stunt Race, Stunt Race FX for it was like, fuck this horse shit. Yeah, no, Stunt Race FX is like slow. Mm-hmm. You got like three cars that you can choose from. They are all, and this you maybe a, Pro or a con, depending on where you're coming from. They're all like super cartoony. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, man. Stunt Race FX is just, it's slow. The frame rate is really bad. This is the opposite. Like Dirt Tracks FX is like, hey, fast. It feels fast. It feels faster. I think also in Dirt, Stunt Race, like your car is so big in comparison to the track, you feel like it you're going It feels slow. even slower. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a fair assessment. And like, there are three different uh, modes, difficulties in this game, and it's kind of like Mario Kart, where it's like the lower CC is the easy difficulty or the the kid kitty mode, I think they call it. Um, and then there's there's a, a normal, and then there's a hard, and then there's a code to unlock um, a 500 CC, which I can't even imagine because <laughs> uh, this this game isn't perfect. At its core, this game is okay. I can say that. This game, like, I had no problem putting an hour into it. Yeah. This game is okay. It's the bells and whistles added onto it that I think take away <laughs> from the core okay. of the game. Okay, all right. So w- what bells and whistles? Well, what sounds cool on paper is whatever racer is in the lead yeah. and plays their theme. Yes. Well, that's fine on Kitty because you're... Always in the lead. You are dominating. Yeah. Like, so I don't know if it's a dirt, uh, like a... Uh, a dirt racing rule, like if you go off the track, that would put you ahead of somebody that you have to go back and do it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it's very easy to pop over a barrier to yeah. where you would, like if it was Mario Kart, hey, you cheat the system, good for you. You're right. You're winning. This, if you immediately go over, that would put you ahead. Um, you have to go back to where you are and start over again. Not necessarily. Oh, like, really? Yeah, and, but I, but I, if you don't know that, you don't know that. It's yeah. not like in Mario Kart. I agree with you, where it's like, oh, I took a shortcut, because like in Dirt Tracks FX, the game essentially just like doesn't yell at you, but it's got like it's annoying, just like beep beep beep, like someone's honking at you, yeah. and it's like so you want to get back on the track as soon as possible. But like a lot of the speed runs of this game, like eighty um, percent of them take place out of bounds, like off of the off of the track. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not. It's not. I feel like it's not programmed well enough to like determine. Oh, well, he left the track there, but he got back on the track down there, so it's cool. Yeah, but but it, it's also you kind of have to know where how to game it because because it's so easy. At one point, I'm on like the third or fourth race in in Kitty, the like fifty cc. Yeah, I I pop over the barrier. I'm already in first place. Pop over the barrier. It flags me, and I just like. Fuck it. I keep going. Yeah. So I keep going. I drop to ninth place, last or whatever, till I get back to that original point where I dropped off. Once I get back to that point, it resyncs. So then I have no problem lapping back up the other racers to get back into first and win again. Right. That's how fucking easy that mode is. Yeah. Like it's ridiculously stupid easy. And it's also, it is ridiculously stupid easy. I think another thing that's coming into play is rubber banding because this game definitely uses rubber banding where it's uh-huh. like if you're far behind, the other racers slow down. If you're way ahead, usually one other racer will speed up. <laughs> Especially in this game. The, yeah, very yeah. very specifically programmed for right. the one racer to right. catch up. T-Rex. Yep. And this kind of goes this all kind of circles back around to what you were talking about with the music changing. <laughs> 
because yeah, it can, and it's like soothing, fun music when you're in first. Place. It depends, right? On like, well, yeah, but because each racer of the eight has their own yeah. theme song, and I think they're all really good. Like, I mean, I don't think they're all suitable for a racing game, yeah. but I think they're all like pretty but good. T Rex who rubber bands super tight with yeah. you, like super tight, yeah. so you're constantly going first and second place, first and second place, yeah, uh, to the point that it's like. The theme song is and his switching. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's devil went down to Georgia between his yeah. Satan and your yeah. and your yeah going back and forth, and it doesn't smoothly transition. There is a little horn in between that sounds like the start of the General Lee horn, where it's yeah. like yeah, like it's it's jarring yeah. that it's just constant i think the sound effects kind of suck going through the water and the mud and yeah. then the horn and the the music going back and forth back and forth back and forth back yeah. and forth i think that this i agree with you i think the sound effects could definitely use some work and i don't know if that's like a limitation of how much space they had left on the cartridge or or what mm. I, me just trying to like play devil's advocate there but I agree, the sound effects aren't good. I like I okay, so I like the mechanic, and I agree with you that on paper it sounds really good. Where it's like whoever is in first will play their theme song. I think that's really fun. I think that's a fun thing that we don't see in a lot of racing games. Mm-hmm. And, but I I don't think that is necessarily the problem. I think the problem is really the rubber banding because like if you don't have that, so all tight. of a sudden that music isn't an issue anymore. You destroy, destroy everyone else. Yeah. They don't even have, they're all generic right. pictures. They're just guys in a helmet. T-Rex, though, has his own portrait like you do. Mohawk. Yeah. Sideburns that are almost so a he, chin strap. He is meant to be like on your ass yeah, he's the, the guy. entire time. And you can't play as him. He is nope. not one of the playable racers. Um, Who'd you play as? Uh, well, I started playing as Hog, uh, who... Me too. <laughs> you know I was Hog. Yeah, why? I want to know why. Because uh, he had a sweet bandana and a beard. His name's Hog. Yeah. I, I And I love that. He it, looks like Gene from Wet Hot American Summer. <laughs> his name's Hog. Chat, chat uh, summed it up nicely when, it said, when they said, uh, it looks like, I think it was Tim Allen in disguise as Adam Sandler in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly who said that, but it's like, I liked Hog because like, I was like, okay. When I saw Hog, I was like, in my mind's eye. Young Tommy Chong. All right, let's do this. When I was making Chili Dog for the Son of Sam game, like this is the ballpark Mm. that I had for for Chili Dog. (laughs) Uh, And then, of course, that's changed since then. His father, Chili Hog. Chili Hog, yeah. (laughs) So, But the uh, the real reason was, uh, you can check all the stats of the racers, and um, Hog is a jack of all stats. He is average on acceleration, top speed, mm. braking, and turning. So I'm like, this is going to be my guy. This is going to be like the I benchmark. Didn't, I didn't know their worst stats. I just picked the name I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there is... Um, so The Legend of Gurk came into uh, the stream, and he's a, he's a streamer on mm. Twitch, very knowledgeable about um, retro video games. And he ha- had owned this as a kid. And... Uh, filled me in on like some things like he gave me some tips that really simple tips that maybe if I had the instruction manual would have helped Uh. but I could not find this instruction manual in a PDF online did you know that there are different gears in this game no me neither (laughs) I, I just thought there was a to accelerate yep that is high gear you can also do x for mid gear and y for low gear so if you're going around a tight corner, just hit that Y gear. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. And see, I didn't know that B going in. for guilty gear whenever you want to actually fight each other. <laughs> right. Press, so hold down L and R to be Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other thing was that... Wolverine is on foot. <laughs> you're like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> He's just running on all fours. <laughs> Uh, there is and T-Rex becomes Sabretooth T-Rex becomes a literal yeah. T-Rex <laughs> <laughs> he becomes Sauron <laughs> uh, there is also the the racer you choose the, the racers aren't very balanced aren't very well balanced mm-hmm. at all and, and this is kind of a theme for the game I feel like I honestly think this is at the at its core I feel like this is a very good game 
that made some bad decisions that make it go from great to, in my opinion, pretty good. Mm. And, and and I know that's just my opinion. And, and I do like racing games, and I especially do like like I Moto Racer too. It's like one of my favorite PC games mm. from the '90s. And it's like this is in that wheelhouse where it's like for me like a a motorcycle racing game is way more exciting than a car racing game. Okay. And, and a lot of it's just because they always feel I faster. I can go with you on that. And like, okay. that's what I, that's what I want when I play a racing game. I don't yeah. want realism. I just want to like, feel like I'm going fast. Yeah. I want the fraggles on <laughs> vegetables and snack food. That's <laughs> yeah. what I want. But I mean, yeah, I, but at its core, I think it's really good. But yeah, there's a there are a bunch of fuck ups on the way, and the biggest the biggest fuck up is that that rubber banding between you and T Rex. I mean, that like to me is like the biggest. That is this game's fatal flaw. It's too stressful, and you hear the music. I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel like there's enough room to have fun because you can't like yeah. distance or do well because there's gonna be bullshit to have him constantly back and forth with you like i don't yeah it kind of just made me anxious because i sure. could not get away from him i no matter sure. what i did i could not sure. do it no and i and i get that and i do agree even in mario kart which i know they rubber band some like i still felt better yeah in that than i do in here well and there's it's just so tight and there's a lot more randomization in mario kart too because like there's not a whole lot of that in this game because in mario kart you can you know, strategize and, and rely on random elements like shell, like the stuff you're mm. going to get out of the mystery boxes and stuff like that. Yeah. This game is a little, Dirt Tracks FX is a little more realistic. It's, mm, yeah. it's not super. I don't even know why they make games like that. <laughs> it, well, it, it's not even super realistic. And like the, re, the initial reception to this game was that it wasn't realistic enough. Like the critics kind of like Game Pro ba- bagged on it for. Well, when you collide with other bikes, you don't fall over. You don't crash. You never crash in this game. You never crash in this game. Like, you'll clip through a wall before you will crash, which I have done. I mean, like, this is not a perfect game. Instead of America, say crashing was too violent. Right? Dale Earnhardt had just died. (laughs) America was not crashing. I just think it was rushed, honestly. I think it was rushed, and I think, because you can... I feel like the main issues with the game are programming issues that could be, right, be stunt ironed race out. F, stunt race FX is out. That'll satisfy the public for some mode seven. We got some time for this. Nope, it sucks. Push it out. <laughs> but uh, stunt race FX is the one that I feel like is viewed as a better game, and it's I do not, not think the stunt race it FX is, not. is even a good game. No. Let alone, I mean, stunt race FX is a bad game. Yeah. It is a bad game. Yeah. I stand by that. Because uh, I wanted to go back and revisit it, right? Because it's like we shit on Stunt Race FX. Was it warranted? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, it, it was. It was warranted, and no one was upset about it. Something like Kirby's Dream Course, right. like people, no one was upset about Stunt Race FX or Evo. Like there are uh-huh. there are a bunch of games that we've shit on where people are like, "Hey, come on, I love that game." Stunt Race FX, crickets. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> here's how here's how bad of a game Stunt Race FX is. I own a boxed copy of it. <laughs> uh, all right. I was able to afford it. I don't brag about it. Like these are all like flags for like how bad of a game this is. Uh, I am to stunt race FX as you should be to prayer. <laughs> it's something you do in private. Yes. You enjoy it, but no one has to know but about it. But never in school. <laughs> <laughs> never play stunt race FX bef- on school grounds <laughs> unless you're doing it yourself privately. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're going to meet her on the flagpole before school and yeah. play Stunt Race FX. Yeah. Look, man, if Stunt Race FX is giving you an edge over the other kids on your test, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> God, I never thought about that. No one pray. <laughs> uh, if I see you close your eyes for a second, you're, fa- you're, you're failing. Done. <laughs> All right, everyone everyone, put their prayer hats on. If you right. blink and go over to Mississippi, you're you're done. <laughs> your seat ejects you. <laughs> I think the I think the controls in this game are excellent. I really do. I, I think I think the visuals are good. I, I love the controls because it's like you control with left and right, uh, on, or you can use R and L and like R and left and right on the D pad will lean the bike. R and L will turn the handlebars, and that is like that's 
That's pretty oh, big. Yeah. Because those are two very different things, mm-hmm. and you can, you can combine them, and that actually makes it feel more like you are controlling a bike mm-hmm. because, you know, typically you can lean on a bike to control it, and every now and then, you, when you really need to, you turn yeah. those handlebars. So I think that's really, really neat. The fact that they were able to put a gear system into the game that is not obtrusive because it's like what I don't like in racing games is like where you have to like shift. You know what I mean? Like where it's like that's a separate control. In this game, you don't shift. You really just each button is assigned its own level of acceleration. So each button is its own gear. And you don't have to worry about cycling it down from like high to mid to low or anything mm-hmm. like that. So in that regard, it's a very arcadey racing game. Yeah. So I'm just trying to just trying to explain why I like this game so much. It's just it fits perfectly in a niche of mine where it's like I like arcade style racing games that don't have a that like that strike a good balance between like car porn, racing porn, motorcycle mm-hmm. porn, and just straight up goofy arcade antics. I like the arcade style a lot more. So this this appealed to me. Yeah. Also, I think the 3D looks really good, man. Like their faces, like all the racers. I mean, it gets fucking bonkers at times, <laughs> but like it's 1995, you know, on a it, super it looks, Nintendo. It looks like I'm playing with the end match of like a Virtua Fighter game where it's just yeah, it's super blocky. Yeah, you know? it's early. It's early, a, early 3D, but on, on a, a super, super Nintendo, Nintendo yeah, not yeah. at the arcade. I I think that it's like. There are two arguments, you know, there are two conversations to be had there. Like, you know, looking at it in its time and looking at it now. I mean, because, yeah, now it looks like pretty bad. Yeah. But, I mean, on that same token, like. Back then. Yeah, but back then, I think it, it it's impressive. One thing that also threw me off, because I was expecting it, because I have, there's more of a denotation in any video game where if I'm in a racing, three, two, one, go, or a big stoplight. Going green, you know, red, yellow, green. Yeah, I had, I was waiting for that, so I'm just standing there, not realizing the guy, the little guy over in the corner, dropping his flag. <laughs> I'm just sitting there while everybody else just takes off. Like, where the fuck was that? What was I? What am I doing? It took me like two races before I realized, like, oh, he's silently over there moving his flag. I think there's a sound cue. I don't, I don't oh, remember. I didn't, I didn't get one at all. Really? Yeah. It just, they just took off all of a sudden. No, no. I think, I think I'm. I would. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, I'm almost positive there's a sound cue. <laughs> I can't remember what it is though. Um, so I don't know. Maybe because I. The reason I say that is because I was not paying attention to the dude with the flag. Yeah. You know, up until the end where it's like, God, please let me finish, because it was like. I mean, you're right. It is with T Rex on normal mode. It is stressful because he is constantly on mm-hmm. your ass. I mean, you're you're flipping back and forth constantly, and I like that. I like that to a certain degree like i like that level of excitement because 50 cc kitty mode is boring when yep. you're just lapping over and over and over, over again and over it's boring um i mean it's i guess kind of fun to learn the courses but i mean it's not very exciting like I, I, I thought like i'll let kenna play this kenna being six like yeah. oh no i can't she, imagine she she would play this be like i played a game and i'm winning nah <laughs> But what did did she play? No, I, I'm I'm thinking about letting her see what she thinks. I'm curious because yeah. like I think like Henry wouldn't like it. I don't think he'd be into it because like I think it'd just be too boring for a six year old. Mm. You know, but maybe I'm wrong. Especially the first course, the big O. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there are so I like how it works. I like how the uh, circuits work because there's a mode, the race mode. Um, it's kind of like. You will race a course, and they'll take the bottom, the the people who finish last, and they'll disqualify them. They'll just cut them off. Yep. And then, so the next race on that circuit has fewer racers. And then they take the bottom five out or whatever, and then it, it whittles it down to pretty much, you know, you, T-Rex, and three others. And it's really going to come down to who wins you or T-Rex mm-hmm. pretty much every time, which is seriously, that is the biggest flaw of the game. I really do think that if they fixed that, that this would be a game that is much higher regarded than it yeah. is. Cause like no one, there's not a lot of information on this game, which yeah. blew my mind because I was like, cause I wanted to test it out to make sure it worked because you know, some FX games are wonky and it worked. And I was like, when I was testing it out, like even in the first three minutes, I was like, this is a good game. Like this is a good game. 
I, I just think, I don't know, man. I think you just got to be, I think you just got, it has to be the right kind of game for you and you have to be willing to overlook. I do, that's truly about the gears. Defense. I do like that. That is a cool concept, the way the controls are laid out. I would never have thought it, but yeah, don't, the way, that does sound, that, that makes me feel a little bit better about it. I still don't love it. Yeah, but sure. Like that is that is that is cool that they did that. And I'm not trying to sell you on it because I don't think I ever can. Yeah. Because I do not think that this is like, at I don't think this is a game that you would ever enjoy. No, I really don't. I mean, like I don't think I, there's I'm any. A, I'm a hard sell to ever like a racing game. Sure. And there are racing games that I absolutely fucking hate. Like I mean, the four wheel drive, like that game. <laughs> like I mean, there. And there's another. We've got one coming up. That has also dirt in the title. I think it's just called like Dirt Track, or or, or it's got a real similar name. That is also an FX dirt racer. Dirt Track S U X. Oh man, I want to play that one. Uh, that looks horrendous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dirt Racer. Dirt Racer. Dirt Racer is what it's called, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. it looks real bad. <laughs> real bad. Uh, we're gonna pine for the days of Dirt Tracks mm, FX. Probably wrong. Do you have any achievements? Uh, I have a couple that came in from uh, from chat on Twitch, uh, but before I get into that, I do want to tell you my like the my the most fun thing in this game is when I said they do most things in 3D. It is like most things, like the the tr- the the name, the title of the game, Dirt Tracks FX, are like yellow blocks, 3D <laughs> polygons that like come up and spell out for dirt a flying track. V for you. Yeah, it looks like a Windows. 95 screensaver or something where you can type in things like I suck asshole and it like types it out and block letters. Um, that's not a thing that we would have done in the 90s. I no. feel like that's super advanced. No, uh, but when you win a so circuit, like come in ass, come in ass. That one, the P and ass. Yeah. There you yeah, go. P and ass. Uh, that's more our speed. Um, <laughs> when you, uh, so like when you win a circuit, they take whatever racers. You, you race dads, they take their face and they blow it up real big and there's this 3D face that's like slightly moving its mouth <laughs> and then like the, the words champ are spelled out in 3D letters on either side and then like blocks are just, golden blocks are just being thrown at the racer's face, the giant face and then when you press the button to continue, fucking Peter Gabriel style, the face explodes. For no reason other than, like, I feel like the designer was like, we can do that. We can make the guy's face explode. Let's so, just... so Peter, Peter Gabriel's face exploded? Uh, Well, allegedly it exploded. No, he just did, like, weird videos. So okay. it's kind of like one of those but things. Say, where... This reference is lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he just did weird video. I don't know if his face ever exploded in one of his videos or not, but, like, I also wouldn't be surprised. Uh, there's a tag mode too. Yeah, that's uh, that which we need to talk about. Sounded interesting. It sucks though. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. It's really bad. Um, because it turns out it's not fun to play tag on dirt bikes <laughs> when you can't see the other that's racer. What, that's what mom said. Yeah. Oh, come at it behind you and or just even in front of you. I mean, it's yeah. just like because because you're going so fast, which is great. I do love that, but it's like you're going fast. So is the other guy playing tag, and it's like. Because it's so low it turns res, out that you and T Rex just playing grab ass back and forth. Pretty much. I mean, like it's impossible to keep track of. You can't like lock on or anything. So it's like, and there's no like mini map showing the the course or anything. So and that's in the races too. But it's just it was. It seems like a fun thing to add, but also like uh, it wasn't in practice. It wasn't fun. And, and another horrible thing about this game that I do like quite a bit again is um, when you play in two player mode. It, you can play two players, but it's split screen and the frame rate goes nuts. So I can only imagine. So this is like I can only imagine. It, it, technically, it is a two player game, but like in reality, it's a single player game. You split those twelve frames per second to six and six. Yeah, that might be pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but. I do have some achievements uh, that came in from Twitch chat. Uh, the first of which comes in from Doc, and that is Dirt Tracks Fucks. Uh, in order to unlock Dirt Tracks Fucks, be sure to insert your SNES cartridge all the way in the SNES, not just the tip. Thank you, Doc. And I, 
any I think any time we play a game that ends in FX, we should call it fucks. All right. All right, it's done. I don't think <laughs> we have many others that end in <laughs> FX, unfortunately. Uh, the next achievement comes in from Cthusius Jeff, and it is Piggy Palace. In order to unlock Piggy Palace, oh, win all 125 CC or 250 mm. CC circuits as Hog. Yeah, nice. There were a lot of achievements about Hog. Yeah. <laughs> Here are some honorable mentions. Here are 14 of them. <laughs> yeah. Also Hogs Out by uh, Oddfellow <laughs> Sam. Dave's prize-winning hog from John. <laughs> Who Let the Hog Out by Blinko Nick. <laughs> These are all essentially the same achievement with different titles. <laughs> Uh, and the third achievement I have uh, comes in from Ted Dastic Jr., and that is T-Rex, W-R-E-C-K-S. Uh, in order to unlock T-Rex, get your ass handed to you by T-Rex, mm-hmm. which happened to me multiple times. I had to do a circuit over and over again a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any achievements, Tyler? Uh, John Hammond. Okay. You do that by beating T-Rex in every race of a circuit. All right. Must go faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Spare no expense. And then uh, fuck your rules. Affects your rules. Go, go backwards and then still win. <laughs> I got that one. Man, I'll t- dude, on 150 CC on the second circuit, there was a race that I got down to last. And was able to get first place on it. And like that, mm. I know it's rubber banding, but I mean, that was so fucking exciting. Like, yeah. that is what, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's what makes racing games fun, where it's just like, it's all over, but fuck it. Let's try really hard anyway. And what's the worst that could happen? And you, you get Power Rangers Zeo. That's the worst that can happen. And it's pretty bad. We got to run the risk, though. Got to run the risk. <laughs> Tyler? Yes, Dave. We've already compared this game to Stunt Race FX. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does this game, Dirt Tracks FX, belong on Tadpog's Top 100 Super Nintendo games? I, I believe we will disagree, but I, think I that will we say probably no. will. I would put this on mine, for mm-hmm. sure. I think Stunt Race FX... I think this could easily... Stunt Race FX is off, right? If it's a substitution thing, it absolutely could easily, pull it out, put it in. Easily replace. Yeah. But I get I get you. It, this is one that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we would figure it out. It would, I, I do think it is stupid for Stunt Race FX to be on that list and this to not be. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. This is this is much better than Stunt Race FX. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll have to agree to disagree. Yeah. I, I would, <laughs> we agree it's better than Stunt Race <laughs> FX. I'd put this, I would put this on my top 100. It would be very, very low, yeah. but it would be on my top 100 yeah. just because I, I truly think that if you're into this kind of game, like this, this is a gem. This has been like a great month for me because like Final Fight Three was way better than I thought it yeah, was going to be. Yeah, yeah, Dirt Tracks, Dirt Tracks FX was way better than I thought it was going to be. So what I'm trying to say is our next game is probably going to be super, super mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the best. We're going to be like not a watery turd. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be real. It's gonna be a cornstarch turd, not a watery turd, not a liquid diet turd. Just a just a sphere of just hard <laughs> marble. All right, uh, Tyler. Yes, Dave. I am curious how much this game is on average, according to PriceCharting.com. Tyler, if you were to buy this game loose, stunt rate, not stunt race FX, dirt tracks FX. How much do you think you would pay for it? Six dollars. Six dollars. Let me check to see if it has changed recently. Tyler, actual, I'm going to do it real slow because I'm pulling up, actual Mm. retail value of Dirt Tracks FX loose on average for the Super Nintendo, Mm -hmm. according to pricecharting.com via the Game Eye app at the time of this recording is seven dollars. All right. Seven dollars. Pretty close. Yeah, right. very, very close. Tyler? Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a beard that sums up how you feel about it, mm-hmm. what kind of beard would you give it? Give it the the stubbly motorcycle riding beard of Ray Liotta in Wild Hogs. All right. Yeah. That's a very good one. I like that a lot. I mean, he's still the villain, but yeah. Yeah, but he's like 
But he's still Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta's Tad Bog Cannon. So anytime <laughs> you bring him up, it's just, I love it. Like, if we really ever have a celebrity on the show, I hope it's Ray Liotta. I do have an SNL skit I was watching that had Ray Liotta in it when he <laughs> hosted. I was like, I should post this on The Nation. How long ago did he host it? Oh, it was a while. Jimmy Fallon was very young and very new to the show. Yeah. It was it was him, Rachel Dratch, and Jimmy Fallon. Okay. I was hoping he was promoting No Escape. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Dennis Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, mm -hmm. that sums up how you feel about it, uh, what kind of glasses would you give it? I would give it the spectacles of one Jacob York of Wolf Fighting oh, fame. I like him. Jacob claims he has forgotten how to ride a bike and cannot do it. <laughs> I read that in his Twitter bio. Just I think like it's all true. the other racers that aren't you yeah. and T Rex. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know they're how to do it. They're all Jacob. Or they're all very careful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey all, in the end, all you've got your health. <laughs> Slow down. I think it was Rhythm Master Paul Korn. We can come in third and be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Rhythm Master Paul Korn who said that uh, you and T Rex are the only two who have motors in your bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else has my mom as their mom just taking that shit out. <laughs> Tyler? Yes, dude. You have any other thoughts on Dirt Tracks FX before we move on? I do not. All right. I have some more questions for yeah, you. I'm then. ready for those questions. We have a quiz that came in from um, our friend Ross Rachel Green. This quiz is entitled Dirt Box FX. Mm. Sounds like my ex girlfriend. Hey, oh. <laughs> cha cha cha. Uh, Ross says Jasmine box. It was a Jasmine <laughs> box. <laughs> Patreon.com slash that bug. <laughs> Learn all about it. Uh, Ross says, in case you were wondering, some people refer to their anus as a dirt box. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. Then what's call, a call it my anti boat race. Yeah, there you go. My backwards, yeah. my reverse boat race. Yeah, your brown canal. <laughs> uh, because it's full of poop. Oh, okay. I don't poop and dirt aren't the same, right? I, I remember been... that's uh one of Albert Fish's ex wives. Dirt? He she he married all... dirt. She she, <laughs> she 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 was pressed in court to describe the activities he did. He loved shitting out in the open to unsettle people. <laughs> So she would have. Why did they? Why did this man get to like walk around in public? I don't know. You know, but like, at one point he married like a woman from like middle to high society, and like would shit around the house during company, and like she around to, the house, yeah, like on tables. To, and She had stuff. to testify like, about it. She's like, he would leave his. I can't. No, ma'am, you're testifying. You're under oath. He would leave his dirt. His dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going to be the worst thing about Albert Fish. Yeah, surely. <laughs> uh, Ross continues with that out of the way, this week has been pretty quiet again. Mm -hmm. There's chicken pox going around the boys' school, and I paid it no attention as he has had it. It turns out that the people who have been getting sick, <laughs> that COVID has evolved, have also had it. <laughs> So it's either they didn't have it before, or it's something else like smallpox. Good Lord. All right. Well, 2022. <laughs> broken back 2020. Isle of Man has redeveloped smallpox. <laughs> Nuclear smallpox. <laughs> uh, Ross continues, probably not, though. Uh, I remember how I got chicken pox when I was in first grade. Mm -hmm. It's because uh, Victoria had chicken pox, and her mom... So they were mosquito bites and sent her to school. And then about 12 of us got chicken pox. <laughs> oh, I had chicken, chicken pox in this house. I remember when I had it. I had a pretty pretty mild case of it. I did too. Somebody at school, yeah. Um, although I do have a chicken pox scar right there. Right there by my mm -hmm. eyebrow. I couldn't stop scratching, man. Yeah. Couldn't help it. Ross continues, anyway... Dirt Tracks FX has 10 letters in the title, so you know the drill by now. All right. All right. Going to drill our dirt box. Are you ready? Yeah, I am. Ready for your dirt box. This D 
is a movie tie-in which sees a cop being unfrozen to help capture a criminal. Demolition Man? Demolition Man. Did that have a Super Nintendo game? I think it did, actually. All right. The ni- yeah. All right. Locking it in. Demolition Man. It is Demolition Man. I bet that's real good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ooh, I love the movie, but... Doesn't Judge Dredd also have one? I believe Judge Dredd does, yeah. Uh, next question. This I stars characters based on vehicle safety equipment. This I? This I stars characters based on vehicle safety equipment. What is a vehicle safety equipment? It's crash test dummies. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's pretty good. (laughs) There was a crash test dummies game. Uh Uh-huh. But But is it it called? Ingrid Bergman's crash (laughs) test dummies. I hope it is. I hope it is. Vehicle safety equipment. Vehicle safe seatbelts? Airbags? What's vehicle safety equipment? That would start with an The Jaws of Life? (laughs) (laughs) The club? (laughs) Starts with an I. Ignatius McGillicuddy's. Ignition? Ooh. Ignition Turnabout, the saga (laughs) of the key. Ignition Turnabout, the saga of the key, locking it in. (laughs) It is, in fact, incredible crash dummies, comma, the... (laughs) <laughs> Man, that was that was fucking rigid in a dirt box. Yeah. That's Boss. that's also going to be uh, a horrible game. <laughs> Did we already? I thought we already played it. Mm-mm, no, Crash Test Dummies. Yeah, no, I thought we did. No, okay. Uh, next question. I remember that. <laughs> next question. Um, now I'm curious what you're thinking of. I'm thinking of Crash Test Dummies. We have not done Crash Test Dummies. You're checking, checking out. Because I need to know what you what it was that you're thinking of. Once there was this girl who... <laughs> where, oh, where is my... I think you're right. I think I... I, I know I'm right. I yeah. played it. I played it recently. The Crash Test Dummies game. Uh-huh. I must have just had a wild hair at my ass playing. I was about to ask why. I bet, I bet I just played it like... I probably got bored of playing something out here, some bad game, and scrolled through my list. I know. Played I played it. this bad game. Was it yeah. good? No. <laughs> All right. No. So what you're saying is we don't we we didn't do that episode, but we don't need to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. This R features a skateboarding fire breathing dragon. Reptar. The skatenator. All right. I kind of don't want to lock that in because maybe we can figure this one out. R- Rony Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Skateboarding, fire breathing dinosaur. Sounds like a dragon to me. It's something weird, obscure. Skateboarding, fire breathing dragon. This sounds like something I would know because I like dinosaurs. I like fire. I like skateboards. I mean, I can picture what it would look like. I just imagine it's a it's a weird, offbeat '90s shitty dinosaur skateboarding game. That, that <laughs> yeah, I, don't know about. I think that's probably a pretty safe yeah. assumption. So I, I'll never guess it. I'm, whenever like skateboarding comes in, like I think of Adventure Island is what I think of. Mm. So you I'm go. gonna go ahead and Adventure say Adventure Island, Island. Super Adventure that, Island, Super Adventure Island, <laughs> locking it in. It is in fact Radical Rex. All right, never heard of it, but I bet <laughs> it's what I said it was. <laughs> Next question. This T stars a marsupial from down under. Tasmania. Right? Yep. Come on, Tasmania. Is that was Come that the name of the game, Tasmania, or was it Tasmanian Devil Presents That's hard to a say. Looney Tunes game, comma the <laughs> you're, you're probably yeah. It's something like that. Like uh, ta- Taz's tremendous day or some shit. What's sad is I own this game. I should yeah. know the name of it. <laughs> I, I I think it might just be Tasmania. Because okay. that was the name of the show, right? Yeah, I think so. Tasmania. Welcome to Tasmania, or maybe it was Tasmania. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tasmania, logging the it in. The Bing Crosby dad. And, you know. Tasmania, the Bing Crosby dad. I forgot mm-hmm. about that, man. Well, just get some orange juice, Taz. It'll calm you right down. Wow. Nice, cool glass of orange juice. You know, that is pretty funny, though. 
You know, like that's a pretty because he, he beat his kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> With oranges. Yeah. No, I mean it really explains a lot about Taz. That's what I'm saying. Yep, <laughs> explains why he eats the things he eats. Um, next question. It was Tasmania. We got yeah, it. Okay. This T is based on a film about the life of inanimate objects that raises questions like, if you come on one and leave the room, would they get up and clean themselves? That is Toy Story. Toaster, comma, the brave little. <laughs> Toaster, comma, I'm coming in it. The Dave Moore story. Why does the toast smell like this in the morning, well, I'm play- Mom? I'm playing Ghostbusters. I came on a piece of toast and put it in the toaster. <laughs> Now watch it dance. <laughs> <laughs> you come in the toaster and start yelling names at it, <laughs> hoping it'll dance. Bing Crosby told me to. I can't help it. <laughs> he said it would calm me down. It's a nice little thing when you shoot a jacket <laughs> into your toaster. If you've made it this far into the Hear podcast. that salty Bernie Ackward spill? That's how you know it's working. <laughs> Toy Story. Toy locking story. it in. It is Toy Story. Tyler, have you ever um, ejaculated on a toy, a child's toy? Let me uh, let me narrow that down. Yeah. All right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> on accident. <laughs> that's okay. You know, yeah, that's okay. I like the mystery. <laughs> How else am I going to make? I think the- I might have even told the story a long time ago. Hmm. You probably did. No, I, I missed and came on like the Lego Fort Josh. Yeah, yeah, you did. Because yeah. Legos definitely came to mind. Yeah. Yeah. So you totally did. Yeah. I mean, that's the mortar. You can't have yeah. bricks without mortar. The heads just pop off. You got to yeah. have some glue in there. Yeah. I mean, we hit the industrial age. I mean, <laughs> I'm just building castles out of mud, <laughs> out of our dirt boxes. Next question This R is the worst game on the SNES. That's weird because Street Hockey 95 does not start with an R. Uh huh. Neither does Sparkster. Uh, Road Riot, four wheel drive. There you go. Locking it in. It is Road Riot, four wheel drive. Next question. This A is block breaking game, which can be played with the SNES mouse. Block breaking game. Arachnoid? Was there an ara- like Did that? Did that come out for the SNES? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Act Razor 3, locking it in. They, Perfect. Act Razor 2 didn't go over well, and they were like, fuck it, man. Block, God's, block breaking. God's just playing skee ball. Just it, throwing break, breaking shit. It is arachnoid. Oh, all right. Uh, Good co- job. Colon, do it again. <laughs> D-O-H it again. Next question. This X sees you shooting down dysfunctional robots and supports the super scope. X? This X sees you shooting down dysfunctional robots and supports the super scope. Xeno Blaster. Xana Xanados. Xana Xanatos. Xanatos. Xanadu. Xavier's school for sharpshooting mutants. I want to say it might be Xanadu. Xanadu, locking it in. It is Exo. That's close. <laughs> That's a Final Fantasy spell. Uh, next. Vanish, Exo. We know the drill. <laughs> we got this. Next question. This F recently celebrated its 30th birthday in Japan. Man, that is a hard ass question. So it has to be a super... Well, Final Fantasy IV just hit its 29th birthday. Mm. So probably uh, Final un- Fantasy un- III. Unless what I shared was <laughs> off by a year. It might have been. A lot of times those on Facebook like get shared around for a really long time to where it's... So you want to do Final Fantasy IV? Yeah. Logging it in. It is F-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. This is... X is a side-scrolling platformer until you reach a boss, and it becomes more like a one-on-one fighter. Xanadu. Xanadu. <laughs> Locking it in. I'm pretty sure there's a game sort of like that somewhere. I think Xanadu. Or is it Fact Xanadu? I don't. <laughs> if Faux if Fo Xanadu is on the NES, I don't think Xanadu had a uh, had a, okay. a an SNES version. Um. X X Wing. X Wing Fighter. I'm pretty yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think that I don't think that's it. X Men? 
Yeah, okay. A one-on-one fighter, though. X-Men, locking it in. Mm-hmm. It is X. We never, never, <laughs> never would have gotten this. X dash caliber with a K, 2097. So kind of close with X-Men. X-Men, Because there was X caliber. Nightcrawler, X caliber. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Britain, all that. Um, and then a final question. You find a Polybius machine in an old truck stop. Do you play it? No. I'm sure all the stories are bullshit, urban legend, but I think I would still be too wary of it. You no. what, you don't want to be mind controlled and kidnapped by yeah. the government? No, I'm good. I think I just take pictures of it and put it online. Yeah. I think I'd play it. Oh man. Why not? Oh man, dog. I mean, look. Chili Dog got put into a program and he made That's it. That's true. He he's came the, out the other he's side. Doing great. <laughs> he didn't die at all. <laughs> got a whole bunch of he kung knew the upper echelons of the CIA. Yeah. He knows kung fu. Got a bunch of kung fu babies. <laughs> That's fine. So I'm gonna play it. Um, because who knows how long it's gonna be there. It's true. It could disappear. I actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I'll just wait for the home port. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, get sculptured softworks yeah. on that. <laughs> put Sonya Blade in there. Yeah, yeah. Then you got Randy Holland. He's in. <laughs> well, Dave, I'm going to go over here and grab this batter up peripheral that we oh, have here. Oh, yeah. Of bovine bear. Yeah, McAllen. please. Go ahead and plug that up. Plug it. Plug it up. Put this plug thick it end up. on the ground. Yes. Facing up. Yeah. Put my head on the other end, mm-hmm. Walled Crazy Kid style, and I'm going to turn around in a circle over and over and over. Uh, so my Nona hole is pointing in a random direction. Okay, yep. And perfect. I'll say that per- while I do it, I'm saying the prayer that we all love to say. Yes. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. Stop. 451. 451. 451. Final Fantasy IV. Race driving. With a Ew. apostrophe. Ew. Race drive in. Drive in. Man, why are race. you like the most generic? Like, race driving. Car, car driving. Well, it's not driving, because then that would be too fancy. This is casual. Oh. Race driving. Oh. Or, uh-huh. I have a proposal. Okay. This might not go over well, mm-hmm. but are you aware that the Animaniacs reboot came out? This week. Oh, it did. And okay. there is an Animaniacs SNES game. There is. Maybe we could like grab that hype dragon by the tail and ride it to success. Yeah, okay. And fortune and fame. Yeah, good. I don't want to do race driving. <laughs> and then we could just re roll. Race driving. We could just re roll. That sounds so bad. I don't want I don't want to do two racing games in a row that are just, I don't yeah. want you to have to do that. Mm-hmm. No. Anime Let's do Animaniacs. That sounds good. Okay. Let's do it. Animaniacs. Yeah. We're gonna Grab that, that SEO drag by the tail. Yeah. We're going to be heretics. Yeah, absolutely. And spit in the face of our Dark Lord, yeah, fuck, the randomizer. Fuck your race driving. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fuck, we draw the line at race driving. Two in a row. No, 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 no. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, I've been forgetting to read from the Ultimate N- Nintendo Guide to the SNS Library 1991 through 1998 by Pat Contry, courtesy of Master Mold Mike. Um, they gave Dirt Tracks FX uh, three stars, which I think is I think is pretty fair. Okay, I personally would give it like three and a half, mm. but mm. three, I feel like it's fair three. enough. Fair enough. You want me to look and see what they gave? Uh, race, race driving. driving? No, we gotta say we'll, to, we'll do it eventually. <laughs> I, I just guess. don't. I just don't want to do two racing games like that in a row. It's like doing. If we were to get two another sports game, yeah. Or, if we did two consecutive yeah. football games, like I don't want to do that. That's not going to be fun for a listener, Look, man, even. I'm so. excited about Animaniacs. I just saw someone on the SNES subreddit post that they were playing it, and I was like, "Oh man, I forgot that there's an Animaniacs game." And I was like, "Maybe Tyler will be into that." Yeah, totally down for that. All right, Race cool. Driving. All right. What? <laughs> <laughs> just the title pisses me off. It's, it's like. Put in some fucking work. They're not even trying. Race driving. They're not even trying. C- car fasting. Fast <laughs> fast car. Yeah. Yeah. Go fast car. Yeah. 
fuck that. Fuck, fuck whatever that game is. <laughs> well, I have a good idea of what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Animaniacs next week, bucking the randomizer because that's some horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't like it. We wouldn't like it. Let's do something fun. Yeah. I don't know. They might like it. Not the game, but <laughs> hearing, I mean, honestly, I'm having a lot of fun hearing you yell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's rare I get you like that you're actually visibly upset. Yeah. Just fuck that. Of all the yeah. things we could have drawn that, yeah, that's another racing game, another that racing fucking game. bullshit generic yeah. horse shit. And I I'm not sure, but I'm willing to bet that it's worse than Third Tracks FX. Oh, I'm sh- yeah, absolutely it will be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's an apostrophe in it. Yeah. They dropped the G. Race driving. driving. God. Just the the lack of drive (laughs) in it just pisses me off. (laughs) All people dream about making games, and you make something called race driving. Race driving. Fuck you. (laughs) Did you know it's actually a baseball game? What? Okay. (laughs) All right. Then I'm on board. What kind of overpowered suit did you let be like, no, race driving. That sounds great. (laughs) It tests very well with our focus groups. I don't even they know. know exactly what it is. I don't even know who developed it, but now I'm super curious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get to that. LucasArts! <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo? <laughs> it honestly, like, if it was... Bungie? <laughs> were they, what were they even doing? <laughs> if it were an NES game, I could totally buy that, like, Nintendo, like, released it mm. super early in the NES. <laughs> oh, I got tennis and baseball and race driving. <laughs> Bethesda and Obsidian? They did something before New Vegas? <laughs> it's Super Demon Car in Japan. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> like, that's too scary for our good Christian kids. Race driving. Race driving, it is. That guy sort of looks like race banning. Can we just call it race driving? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a political thriller about a race war. Race driving. Yeah, yeah, I almost went there, but I was like, ah, back <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll pump the brakes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you do in a car when you're race driving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here are the achievements for race driving. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Fireball. I'm just like, these are coming in from Twitch chat right now. <laughs> Old white cop. <laughs> Yeah, Animaniacs. So, good. You won't have to hear me bitch about race driving for, I don't know, we might draw it again. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, well, I mean, do you want do you want to re-roll at the end of Animaniacs, or do you want to just go on with race driving at this point? Well, think think about it. Well, think about I'm gonna it. Leave it. I'm going to leave that I'll up to you. I'll think about it. We've communed with the randomizer. The randomizer has given us its orders, and look, man, if you want to... We probably shouldn't bucket bucket. We'll just, hey, this is a good opportunity for us. We're not doing two two racing games like that in a row. Yeah, randomizer will understand. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. We'll talk. We'll we'll figure it out. Hey, do you like this? Do you like us? Well, we have a Facebook I page, do. Tadpog. Episode episode announcements, memes. You know, that's our journal big page, Tadpog. A link to the Tadpog Secret Santa sign up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if uh, if you're a real fan, if you want into more of the dank shit, uh, more of that memeage, more of that planning, uh, Tadpog Nation. If you're a, a good little boy or girl who enjoys, or or neither, whatever you don't have to conform to anything. If you're if you're just if you like organized chat, fine, come on in. There, you know, Discord for that. The Discord's a lot of fun. Bit.ly slash Tadpog Discord. I just added like a bunch of Seinfeld emotes on there. People are pleased about that. <laughs> we got uh, a Jerry honk now is a thing. That's mm. that's an emote that's live on that <laughs> server. Uh, so that's been the big news on the Discord. Yeah. And then the Game Buds, of course. We're doing... Uh, I don't know what we're playing Thursday, but uh, we've been playing Among Us. I don't know if we're going to switch it up mm-hmm. or not. But eventually we probably will. Sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on uh, Twitter and Instagram, Tadpog underscore podcast. Mm-hmm. You want a shirt? We have shirts. Mm-hmm. Shirts.tadpog.com. Mm-hmm. We have masks. Mm-hmm. What's the mask? Masks.tadpog.com. You got it. Uh, do... We're on iTunes, YouTube, mm-hmm. Spotify, mm-hmm. Uh, Stitcher. Stitcher. I saw uh, we get on Audible now, uh, so that's a new that's a thing that are having podcasts on. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I need to look up uh, how we get on Audible. Yep, because I'm I'm right now I'm listening to uh, Rhythm of War and the Stormlight Archive. Very excited, loving it. Yeah. As soon as I'm done with it, 
Ready Player Two. Oh, I got, I got yeah. that one downloaded, ready to go. I forgot about Ready, Pl- ready Player Two. Yep. Is that one that, that al- came out yesterday? Today that, or yesterday? Is that one also by Ernest Klein? Or? Yep. Okay. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> maybe <laughs> his brother. If he got sad, <laughs> his at all less the... successful brother yeah. already player two. I was curious. Maybe he got sad at Twitter and then <laughs> decided he wasn't going to write a sequel. Someone <laughs> yeah. else was like, "I'll write it." Did and you read then... Armada? No, Ready Player Two. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just mean the anger of a Ready Player One because that I feel like is a book that like people were okay with until it was optioned to be a movie, and then like Twitter shit all over Ready Player One. Oh, really? Oh, I, yeah. I love, that's right. I mean, I love Ready Player oh, One, the yeah. book. I haven't seen the movie. I heard it's very different, but still good if you don't, if you detach yourself from no, the book. people shit on the book. Yeah. Wow, why? Just a list of, they just, it's a nostalgia list, essentially. Yeah, of course it is. Still fun. Yeah, <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. yeah. I liked the book, but yeah. Mm-mm. It was, that was a rough, that was a rough period. I well, Twitter gets angry about a bunch of stuff all the time, yeah. so. Yeah, it is. It's a big nostalgia trip. I think that's fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and I think that was the point of the book. Why do you eat cookies? It's just sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's good. Why don't you fucking read War and Peace? Why don't you eat broccoli? It's good for you. Come on. Well, because I, I eat broccoli and sugar. <laughs> I don't know. I only read cornstarch, <laughs> the book equivalent of cornstarch, which is tabletop role playing books. I mean, Krispy uh, Kreme is just a bunch of donuts. It's a bunch of different donuts. Just go through eating the same donuts. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm so glad we pulled race driving and put you in. A, put you in put a, me in a round up yeah, place. Yeah, just where you normally where people are not. just can't just be happy with shit. Just yeah. be happy with. There's enough bad shit out there. Just be happy with some shit. Well, to be fair, I think that if. Maybe the movie had been optioned in 2020. People would probably be like, eh, this isn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, suddenly we have other shit to worry about. Right. Yeah. What are they doing today? Cutting our heads off. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how, like, where it's like, man, the thing that everyone's mad about is Ready Player One. <laughs> wow. What a, what a year to be alive. <laughs> Oh, my fucking cell phone. It has to go to space. <laughs> give it a minute. It goes to give it a minute. <laughs> good old, good old jerking off Louis C.K. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we got? I don't know. I'm ready to talk about Patreon. So most importantly, right. got that. Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tadpog. Uh, if you're interested in donating, which let's be honest, if you've gotten to this point in the show, I you're qualified. Yeah. <laughs> Good news. You've been pre-qualified to donate to our Patreon. You've been pre-qualified <laughs> to give us money. Uh, One dollar gets you access to pretty much all the bonus content that we have ever done on Patreon. Uh, and I can say this with all honesty, I think that's a steal yeah. because there's quite a bit of content on there. Really good stuff like Tyler's uh, Piggy Palace, Call of Cthulhu, uh, Role playing game, uh, which was fantastic. Truly, that is worth that is worth the donation alone. But there's a bunch of other stuff, some videos of us eating uh, spicy foods, uh, and just some bonus episodes where we talk about games, and some bonus episodes where we talk about other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, no, nothing new. Uh, I do have some people to thank, uh, some executive producers uh, who go above and beyond on Patreon and donate uh, twenty dollars or more a month. Uh, this episode was executive produced by Usurper Grimm, God Emperor Alex Pena, Cthusius Jeff Miners, Cousin David Galino, Platinum Member Brett Miller, Coronavirus Savior Cubicle Monkey, Zeus Laser, Steve Dixon, Joseph Phillips, Cody Phillips, Bantha Master, The Eightfold Daniel Abernathy, Plinko Nick Price, Time Lord Josh Edwards, Executive Producer Dig Dougie, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G., Magical Sleeper, a.k.a. Big Dick Pie Baker, Chris Vaughn, Laud Mulaney Dennis, Pinball Archmage, Chris Edler, congratulations on your marriage, Sandwich Pope, Phil Hawkins, Drinksmith, Joey Webster, Paul Anderson, Master Cycle Baron, Kevin Link, and Captain Detective Count, Victor Von Cunnilingus Hart. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're fucking awesome. Uh, we appreciate it. It goes a long way. Um, how do you want to... Well, our theme song is moved with Sigmar Drive. Yeah. that track from the show. It's at tapbox.com. I am close this one out, Dave. Uh, like we think the announcer of uh, race driving sounds like. Okay. So until next time. A tropical Capricorn. Capricorn. Man, these cars go fast. 
we didn't eat much. It's like they're dropping in a race. <laughs>